Praise the Lord. It's another wonderful time in His presence this morning. And uh, we appreciate Him for His faithfulness all the time. So this morning we'll be having uh, another wonderful opportunity to listen to Him. I want us to bow our heads as we pray. I want you to appreciate Him in your own way for His mercies over your life. For his faithfulness, for his goodness, for the privilege he has granted you. Thank you, our Father, this morning. Thank you for your power in our lives. Thank you for not leaving us alone. Thank you for always being there. And this morning we ask, O oh God, that you will feed us. You will saturate us with your presence. Amen. And the Lord will be lifted in our spirit after the service in the name of Jesus. Amen. And even afterwards, we will continue to remember that you have touched us with a special touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I welcome everyone that is watching online and also everyone that is here this morning. I want to say uh, thank you to the pastorate for the privilege once again and for the great work they are doing. And I pray the Lord will continue to grant you more grace and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning we'll be uh, talking a little uh, bit about a topic I've uh, titled From Lodiba to Jerusalem. From Lodiba to Jerusalem. And uh, we'll be taking a reading from the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Chapter 9. 2 Samuel 9. We'll read from... Uh, Verse 1. Are you punching it? Thank you. All right, I read from here then. David asked, Is there any survivor? Of the souls out to whom I may show kindness for the sake of Jonathan. Now there was a servant of the family of Saul named Ziba. He was summoned to David, and the king asked him, Are you Ziba? He replied, Your servant is. Then the king inquired, Is there any survivor of the souls out to whom? I may show God's kindness. And Ziba answered the king, There is still Jonathan's son, whose feet are crippled. The king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba answered, He's in the house of Micah, the son of Hamiel, in Lodiba. So King David sent for him and had him brought from the house of Micah, son of Hamiel, in Lodiba. When Meribah, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, he fell prostrate in homage. David said, Meribah? And he answered, Your servant, fear not. David said to him, I will surely be kind to you for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the lands of your grandfather, Saul, and you shall always eat at my table. Praise the Lord. This story is a story many of us may be conversant with. It's a story that uh, talks about a sudden change that God caused in the life of one of his sons. 
From my uh, version here, his name was called Meriba. We all know him to be Mephi Boshet. Meriba means somebody who refused to bow to bows. He resisted the bows. And so they name him Meriba. But in the other way, he is Mephi Boshet. He found, or he, unluckily, uh, he became crippled when they were trying to save him. But then, in spite of his state, he did not forget God. According to his name, he rejected every bow so that he could serve the living God. And at a certain time, God remembered him. And God inspired David and he asked, is there somebody in the house of Saul, of the lineage of Jonathan, that I may show him mercy for Jonathan's sake? The story kind of uh, is linked together to relationship with God and good relationship with human beings. David and Jonathan, we all remember, were great friends, right? Jonathan may not have likely be a good friend to David if he chooses, but he chose to be. Because you do not know the the people God brings your way, what they will be in future. The impact, the relevance, the benefit you will gain from them in future. Everyone God is bringing your way is for a purpose, for a certain time. Praise the Lord. So, Mephibosheth was living in a village remote he was he has even forgotten of ever coming from a royal priesthood he has forgotten about ever having a linkage with the kingship authority he has forgotten about anything that has to do with power one his status has been i mean ridiculed he is crippled and he's just living uh, just by what uh, the servants could just give him. But then, God remembered him. And today, the way I'm going to be led, please, wherever you are at this time of listening to this message, there will be a series of, uh, I will call it, interceding prayers for yourself. So as we are talking, I mean, as the sermon is going, we'll be praying alongside. Praise the Lord, somebody. So he was remembered. And the king said, there is somebody God has moved me to bless. I don't know who he is. Is there somebody in the house of Saul, in the house of Jonathan, that I may bless him? And he was the only survivor. The only one. Nobody was struggling with him. He was the only one. And when he came, if you read down, for you to know how he has forgotten about anything that has to do with possibility of ever making it in life. Go down with me here. And uh, in verse 11. Okay, uh, in verse 8, bowing down low, he answered, What is your servant that you should pay attention to a dead dog like me? That was a former prince, somebody who could have, you know, have access to the throne, but his life, he has totally. Come, he has totally humbled and forgotten about anything that has the possibility of ever being great in life. But God still remembered him. 
you're going to close your eyes where you are and pray this morning that father remember me in your goodness remember me in your goodness lord remember me in your mercy everyone oh god that you have already planned to be a blessing in my life wherever they are oh god let me be remembered today let me be remembered in the name of jesus by your mercy oh god by your mercy remember me remember me thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. mephibosheth was remembered by god he never thought he could be there and the king did not just return everything to him that was owned by his grandfather but he said he will eat at the king's table so he has to be relocated from the village in Lodeba. He was brought to Jerusalem, to the king's palace. And there he was to be all the days of his life. Praise the Lord, somebody. What God cannot do is not written down. <laughs> what God cannot change has not been known. Prayers, when we pray, does not only changes us, it changes things. So when you are praying, you are not just praying that God will go and do something. There is an insight that God is making you to know or to be aware of. Meribah has been concentrating on God. And God who sees the in and out of every human being, knows his status, and he knew what he needed. And he changed his life. Even though he could not merit or even live up to it, God qualified him. He requalified him again to regain everything that had been lost in his entire lineage. You want to pray this morning. Father, by your infinite mercy, you will restore the glory, O oh God, that only you can give to my family. You will restore every lost glory in my lineage. Father, you will restore in your mercy, O oh God. Let there be restoration in my lineage. You will multiply, O oh God, those glories. Ah, Father, even though no one has ever got into a higher level before, let it start from me, from me, from my family, in the name of Jesus. The highest that we have ever been in our lineage, oh God, restore in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are still going to go along. Because this thing that uh, we are talking about has to do, secondly, like I told you, about relationship. We have to be able, as people, especially in the church of God, create that, that opportunity to relate nicely with people. To help when we can. To assist where possible you don't just do things because it's convenient for you alone that is something about given in life it's not just when it is convenient there are cases whereby you have to inconvenience yourself to save a life because that move that you are going to move you never can tell to what extent is going to change that life. So, every opportunity God is giving you is for a purpose. 
when people are being of assistance to your life it is a sign that you too can be a blessing to another life because if you enjoy the possibility of somebody touching your life how much or how better will it be if you touch another life because what is good for you is good for another person praise the lord jonathan and david they had that relationship and they enjoyed it and they used it mephibosheth was not there that time so what are you doing today that will be a blessing to your children tomorrow what are you doing today that you are sowing for your future Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 said, Seize time and harvest shall not cease as long as the head remaineth. It's what you sow that you reap. So how are you taking time to make sure that you are sowing something that you can reap solidly? You are having the same time. 24 hours that every other person has how can you make out that out of that to be a blessing that will be a soul a treasure for you in tomorrow so that is what Mephibosheth Meriba reaped here and I pray that God will help you I pray that God will help you. But you are going to pray for yourself. Lord, make me a blessing to my generation. Lord, help me to be a blessing to my generation. Everyone you are bringing along my way, oh God. For a purpose, oh God, let me see, let me know. How to be a blessing to their life. How to be a blessing to their life. Help me, O oh Lord, in my journey of life to be a blessing. I don't just want to be receiving. I don't, jo I don't just want to be receiving. I want to give. I want to be a blessing to people. I want to be a continuous blessing, Lord. Make me a blessing to my generation, to your church, to people around me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I mean, that is really a great, a great one, a challenge for us as Christians of today. That is only an opportunity. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8, the Bible says, He raised up a man from hatches. From the bush and he maketh him to sit down with kings in the throne so that men shall know that by strength of men shall no man prevail only God so God is waiting for your work to bless God is waiting for your seedling to bless Psalm 1, verse 1, verse, uh, chap, uh, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 3. He said, Upon what it shall be like a tree planted beside the rivers of water. And upon whatsoever he layeth his hand, he shall what? He shall prosper. Your handiwork is not just the work that you are doing. The blessing you have been to other people. Praise the Lord, somebody. And it is not that when you do those things, you want to stand by them. You want to move ahead. Because the people you are doing it for may not be the ones that will immediately repay you. No, it's not even for their sake. Christ said, if you bless those who bless you, what gain is it? Do it for those people who might not even be able to reply or return or even say thank you sometimes because you are not waiting for that. 
Praise the Lord. That was the case of Mordecai in the book of Esther, chapter 6, verse 1. Mordecai, while he was on his duty, heard about the plot against the king. And he thwarted that plan that he never succeeded. And the king was saved. But someday, let's read in the book of uh, Esther, chapter 1. I mean, chapter 6. Esther, chapter 6, from verse 1. And that night, the king could not sleep. So, one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. Please go on. Verse 2. So the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered and halted court of the king's palace to suggest that the king and Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said to him, Haman is here standing in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Right? Go on. And so a man came in and the king asked him, What shall be done for the man who the king delight to honor? Now a man thought in his heart, Who else or who will the king delight to honor? More than himself. More than me. Yeah? So a man, and a man answered the king, For the man who the king delight to honor, he listed everything. But already, God has delighted to honor Mordecai. The king could not sleep because God wants to honor. Ah, praise the Lord. The king, the president, could not sleep because God's child needed to be honored. I want you to pray this morning. Ah, Father, <laughs> let me receive your honor, O oh God, Father. Ah, delight in me, O oh God, Father. Ah, anyone that you will need to disturb, whatsoever you need to shake, O oh God, so that your honor will be known in my life, O oh God. Father, shake, O oh God, every shakeables. Shake every shakeables on my behalf. Avail on my behalf. I don't know where you have made mistakes. I don't know where things are kind of giving you uh, a, a kind of burden, stress. Because of your own mistakes. But God, we have mercy upon you today. Amen. Every judgment against you will be changed in your favor. Amen. I want you to pray, Lord, today, oh God, let me have your favor, oh God. In place of judgment, oh God, let me receive your favor in the name of Jesus. I don't know where, I don't know where you are expecting, but God, we have built heavens, we arise on your behalf today. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mordecai was supposed to be hanged. By the power of this right hand assistant of the king. Because he has the power. He was already planned. The king has agreed. Until God said, no way. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophet no harm. So God thwarted it. <laughs> like he did in the case of Aitofe. The Bible says that Ahitophel was a great prophet. It's like oracle. Every advice he gives is like God is speaking directly from heaven. But when God wanted to change, God to reduce his ideas to nothing. Every strategy against your life, every gathering, Every agreement against your life, against your success in life. I want you to pray this morning. Father, for the sake of your name in my life, toward them, oh God, 
Ah, ask the Lord this morning, Father. Every wickedness from anywhere, by your divine mercy, O oh God, because of the name of Jesus, every agreement, every wickedness that have been decided or agreed upon by any level of people against my life, against your glory in my life, thwart them, O oh God, render them non avoid. You say surely they will gather, but because their garden is not to your glory, you will scatter them, you say. Scatter every strategy, O oh God, against your glory in my life. And prevail. Prevail on my behalf, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord, somebody. Quickly, I will move uh, just to uh, touch the second part of this. Moving from Lodiba to Jerusalem can be filled with challenges. Challenges that will kind of stress you. But the Englishman said, tough time never lasts. But tough people do. You may not have the power of the superman. But when you build the faith of skill, of steel, you can also move things like Superman. Praise the Lord. I want us to remember the story of Joseph. Joseph was a big dreamer. And because of his dream, he was hated. Right from his family. Right from his families. So many at times we wonder, is it possible for families to be fighting? Yes. There, is a, there was a great uh, giant, uh, a, law, a barrister, a lawyer, successful in all ramification back then. He, was, he had so many houses, riches, assets, and he has only two sons. And when he passed away, the two sons were fighting till death. Only two. For the properties, for the inheritance. Only two. One just died among them last month. And they've been fighting. They, they took every matter to, to court. And people have to tell them, must you get to this level? They said, oh, you can't understand. Yes. So, right from his family, Joseph had challenges. If you read chapter 37, 38 of uh, the book of Genesis, even up till 40, you will see it there. 41. Until they sold him. He was going through this. They sold him at 17. At 20, he was imprisoned. After eight years, he settled the dream of those two uh, other colleagues that were there. And he said, please remember me when you go out of this place. Two years, they forgot him. So he was there in prison for ten years. Sometimes those ten years could be a training time for you. So don't just look down on, what, uh, on, on, on great times that you are passing through. For you to get to Jerusalem, God wants to perfect some things in your life. And they will come like challenges. But you don't run away from them. Because God has already made you to overcome. I say you are an overcomer. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So Joseph had to go through all the first accusations. Then go into the prison. Suffer for what he did not, for a sin or crime he did not commit for 10 years. Until when he came to the time and God brought him out. Now he was no more a prisoner. He was not just an ordinary person. He was taken to the top, to the palace. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know how you are going to pray this prayer. 
Because some things are necessary in your life. Some challenges are necessary to get you to your next level. If you, if you don't get that challenge, you will not move. And so God will bring them your way. If Joseph was not challenged and pushed through those lines, he wouldn't have gotten to Egypt. Because he was far away from Egypt. So you are going to pray this morning. <laughs> Just another prayer. That Father, everyone that will lead me to that great level that you have prepared for me. Every challenge that will put me there, that will push me there. With you, with me, oh God, along the way. Father, give me grace to overcome. Give me grace to be able to, to face the challenges. Because without the test, there is no testimony. Without test and you passing the test, there is no testimony. You can't move to the next level. Give me grace to be able to pass my test, oh God. To move to the next level. I will not run away from the challenges. I will wait through them. Because you said, when I move through the fires, they will not mow me. When I walk through the rivers, they will not overcome me. Father, help me, O oh God. All through the ways I needed to pass. All through the challenges that your grace will be there for me. Your strength will uphold me through. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our life as Christians is very, very special. That's why the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it said, for we walk not by sight, but by, by faith. By faith. Faith in God. Hebrews chapter 1, uh, Hebrews chapter yes, 6. So without faith, it is impossible. What? Chapter 12, Hebrew. Without faith, it is impossible. You can't please God. It's something that we have to really get around in our journeys to make sure that we are, we are working in a way that will help us through. I mean, God is with us. We are serving a God that cares for his children. And we as people, we must realize that that care is very, very uh, significant in our lives. And we must hold it tight. We must hold it tight. Because God is watching that his words in the book of Psalm 125. That the rod of the wicked will not lie upon the lots of the righteous. It's a prayer he's praying for you. All the joy God has done for you that is making you happy today. The devil will not have access to them. I said the devil will not spoil your joy. The Lord will uphold you with his grace. The rod of the wicked will not lie upon your lots. In the name of Jesus. So God is concerned about you, about your health, about your life. But there are things you need to really watch. And that is about your character. And that is what is designing or talking about your relationship. Because your character defines your destiny. There are habits, there are attitudes, but they all end up becoming a character. And when you are rigid, you feel, this is the way I want to do it. Only without listening to everybody. Or anybody, you just feel you are right all the way. There could be problems. Listen out to God. Your faith is needed in following Him. 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Oh, did I say Hebrew? That's Hebrew 11, rather. Sorry, verse 6. That without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So put yourself aright with Him today. Create that relationship, that thing. The Bible said God counted the attitude, the character of Abraham as righteousness. Faith in God. And he told him in Genesis chapter 15, Abraham, I'm your exceedingly great reward. Because he was walking with God with all sincerity. Walk with God. You have known him. He will never fail you. So please don't fail God. I beg you this morning. No matter where your Lord is in your journey of life. No matter the status you are seeing yourself now. God has a plan for you. He has a plan to take you to the next level. Which is your Jerusalem. Beyond your expectation he can do it. But how are you agreeing with him? How are you agreeing with him? That is all that he needs. He will send people your way to guide you. He will send people to direct you. Because you can't see him directly. You have to learn to wait through and to understand. Shall we rise on our feet this morning? From Lodiba to Jerusalem. It's a journey. Just like we are walking through our journeys in life. I will want you to just uh, commit your journey in life. And even for the rest of this year. That father take me to my Jerusalem. (laughs) The remaining two months of of this year. I don't know how you are going to do it. But I believe my life. Is in your hands. You don't have to worry. Don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Trouble day don't last always. For there is a friend in Jesus. Who will wipe your tears away And if your heart is broken Just leave your pen and say I know that I can make it I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way my life is in your hand i know that i can make it i know that i can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hand i want you to talk to god father you are my everything i have no one else I don't know about you. Of me, I have no one else. 